All right, YouTube, today we're going to play some Blue White Flash. Give this deck a whirl. Run it through the league. I don't really know a lot about it, so we're just going to get in and start playing it. I've been playing, it qu playing against it quite a bit. And the deck, <clears throat> the deck feels strong. I think it's quite, um, I think it's quite exploitable. Like, if you can deal with their 3-3, three, three, like, I would, I would assume this deck would, like, get beat up a lot by, like, the blue-black deck that I was playing. Because if you can deal with their 3-3 three, three that gives everything flash, the deck's just, like, pretty clunky and awkward. I think I'm gonna keep this hand. Like we have a counter spell, we have a little bit of interaction in the late game. We can have a card that can catch us up. I think this is. I, I don't know if we're supposed to keep hands like this or not. That land's definitely getting cycled. And plus, you know, you really want to play your Dawnbringers on five. So having an extra land or two. Is something that I don't super mind playing against Soul Tide Snakes. So the Settle the Record should be pretty great. Ballista. Okay, so now we're going to cycle probably both of these lands. I doubt we're going to play this until we can kick it. <coughs> Yeah, my opponent can do whatever they want with this ballista here. Yep. So that makes this kind of a threat now. Alright, so there's... There's our flash... Flash... Neuter. So we're basically going to counter probably anything on this turn, because we're going to play either... Settle or Raf next turn. So like even if it's kind of like a really weak card, I think I'm gonna counter it because my man is gonna be so tied up for the rest of the game. If my opponent does nothing, I think I'm still gonna cycle this farmland. My opponent might put it like just work to put a bunch of counters on this ballista. Starting to consider search for his kind of the Yeah, I can see that. Um, I think we're gonna let this go as well. I think we're gonna use this settle the wreckage to catch up. Search for his kind of is also just a very good card. Like it, um, search does a lot for decks like this. Just, like, that's why the old blue-white flash deck was so good back in the day, was because of Copter. Like, that deck was terrible unless you had Copter going. If you had Copter going, the deck was insane because Copter did so much for your mana. All right, so we're gonna... We're gonna, like, settle this. Hope they don't have, like, main deck negate. If they have main deck negate, I'm gonna be sad. Just gonna like let this. I think I'm just gonna settle. Get this thing off the battlefield. This thing is just gonna be really annoying. I might end up like blink of an eyeing this snake. And maybe I was too passive. Like this isn't a control deck. Maybe I had to use like a blink of an eye earlier in the game. Now kind of leave myself open to them resolving something decent here. Another Hydra. Yeah, maybe I toss this.
I probably had to use my mana in the early game somehow. But now I'm probably just gonna like hit this like. Just let this come in here. Opponent's gonna put two counters on it. But I think I'm just gonna wizard's retort, or I'm gonna blink this winding constrictor. <coughs> I think I gotta use my mana. What am I looking for? I'm looking for. I don't think I have any Wrath of Gods in my main deck. No. Okay. So I would need another Settle, and those are pretty gone. Or I would need a Gear Hulk. I think I would just gotta start trading with things. I'm not gonna die. I don't wanna die with all these spells in my hand. Probably put a counter on their ballista here. So we got a lot of damage coming in next turn. Yeah, I think I played too passively. So this is coming in next turn to probably chump this thing. Yeah, I think I was I think I I think I tossed this game because I played a little bit passively. And my opponent can go like, put a counter on, shoot this before blocks, pump, and then hit me for six, seven. If they pump, they hit me for eight. If they sack the ballista. They probably should have played the, um, the snake before combat. I think the snake before combat would have been a good play. Because Snake before combat, I'm just dead. Yeah, so they're going to crack me here. Yeah, we're just going to have six. And now we're pretty much dead, on a, dead as a doorknob. Because we have two threats and that don't need to attack to kill us. Lyra would be not that great. Alright. That's not alright. It gets two activations on this thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think I want to go, like, become kind of a control deck. But I want to just become, like, a. You know, just have some good blue-white control deck here. Um, I don't think I want the rafts. And... I don't think I want all the seal -aways. I don't think I want to try to interact with this deck on that access. I think I'd rather just try to, um... Try to, like, get them with bigger... Go over the top of them. The Gear Hulks don't seem super great in this deck. Because, like, what do you... You're just, you're just getting back Settler and Counterspell. I guess Commit. So is there a card that's better than Gear Hulk in our deck? They probably have Adonis Climb. Like, they're going to bring in some kind of Negates. I don't think they have any blue creatures. Blink of an Eye doesn't seem that great. Maybe I can bring in one Seal Away again. I'm sure they're going to have a card like Negate. And I think we might want our own negates to help fight that back. I don't think we want commit. Commit's just clunky. I'm going to bring in some negates. This is kind of speculative, but I'm assuming they're going to have cards like Planeswalkers or... Um, 
They're gonna have planeswalkers with their own counter spells after sideboard, I think. Let's try this. I'm pretty amped for the uh, Star City Games event today. Alright, we'll keep this. This is kind of cool because I can, like, upkeep if they lead on a, uh, a Llanowar Elf. I can upkeep tap the Llanowar Elf with a Trickster. We're probably just going to flash this in just to get it in because it's going to turn this Wizard's Retort on. Start working this history of Vanalia, but what are they gonna do for a counter spell? Probably they don't play anything, then I don't then my turn sucks. So I think I'm just gonna get this get this history down. Take my opponent to class. School is in session. Okay, there's a Hydra. We can deal with this card though. We'll play the Glacial Fortress. Probably cycling this irrigated farmland. And then we're just gonna jam Lyra. Like I've, I've, I've got four of them. Bristly Boy, yeah. I've got four Dawnbringers, so if they kill the first one, then it's like whatever. And then our knights can actually beat pretty hard next turn. So I put an attacks with this. I might double block it just to get it off the battlefield, even though they'll lose a little bit of value <clears throat> on my history pump. This card's just gonna be so annoying the longer the game goes. And I'll trade this off. Because this isn't doing anything. Maybe I'm supposed to take this card out. But it's just kind of a cool little flash threat. This sets off all their blue mana. Come in here, crack for eight, and then we're just gonna play Bane Slayer Angel. <clears throat> we don't have a lot going on, so I mean, I'm in some, I'm in some trouble if they have an answer to this. Which they, they I mean, they probably have an answer to this. I feel like this deck wants to sideboard into like a card that would play really well in this deck is Glimmer of Genius. So we're gonna keep Siphoner on top, if I had to assume. But I guess Siphoner, like, Siphoner's not dealing with this. Yeah. So that means they don't have an answer to this to this Dawnbringer. Like Glimmer of Genius just plays really well in a in a flash kind of deck, I think. I think I'm gonna play it pre-combat because it what I what I draw might inform something of what I should be doing here. I didn't see the glimmer. The glimmer wasn't in the list that I took there, Farby. Well, I just grabbed I grabbed like Andrew Jessup's first list. At least I didn't see them. 
We're going to go to Cycle of Fetid Pools, untap two of our lands. Yeah, it just feels like this deck doesn't do enough with Torrential Gear Hulk. But like uh, that being said, we're two games in. So on the draw, I probably want a little bit more cards that just beat. Some of my counter spells get worse. I think I just want all of, like the, the big top end cards. I think I want all of these. First five I would made changes because the top one's optimal. Okay, yeah, and I didn't see that. I don't know if I want any of these cards. Like, it's tempting to just have Commit Memory in your deck every time you have Torrential Gear Hulk. Because it's a great, like, you can just end a turn wheel. But, I think we just want all these Lyra. Like, th this is another matchup. Like, I feel like in all these creature matchups, I just want Lyra. Because, like, we didn't do very much last game, and Dawnbringer just won us the game. Hand's pretty good. Got a lot of interaction. Something to catch us up, and then like a, a stable card. Yeah, like it always feels bad cutting that, but I feel like against maybe a deck like this gets more mid rangey. Hopefully, they don't play a servant. Siphoner's like not as bad. Likely cycling a cast out if they don't attack. Excuse me. Alright, snake. I'm just gonna seal this away. Especially now that they haven't played a land. Blossoming defense would probably be kind of an awkward card against us, but. Take our opponent to school. I'm gonna grab some coffee while I'm at sixth. The snake winds up really well against this. They're out of line. They're probably okay getting settled here, so I might not, but like, the thing is if I settle the wreckage them, well now they're drawing lands, but if I settle the wreckage them, and can play Teferi on an open board, then like that's really good. Jade Light. All right, so Jade Light's gonna come in. It's just a big creature, so it doesn't really do a whole lot. I mean, it's just gonna get huge. We have, we have ways to deal with huge creatures. They drew, they drew an Aetherhub, so I don't really care about settling them now. They're debating whether they want another Jade Light. They don't. I've thrown out my back on Thursday, so I've literally been a chiropractor in bed. Ridden. God, I'm sorry to hear that, Farby. What happened? Was it playing rugby? Or were you just, like, doing stuff around the house? I think I'm just gonna cast this, take out the Jade Light, then we get a good attack for eight. And it's so, this is, this, this type of play pattern is so nice. Let's crack in. So they play a Ballista for two. They still can't kill my Teferi. So. Oh, this type of play pattern is, this type of play pattern is really nice. Like when this, when your flash deck, when a flash deck is able to use its mana all the time and then punish, punish its opponents like weird plays. 
It always feels really nice. Probably scrimmage on Thursday. Came out of the rough awkward and rolled away. Kind of lame. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Farby. I hope you feel better. Okay, so that's the card we knew about. I'm just gonna double block one of these snakes. So this is a ballista, a ballista for two gets my Teferi, which looks like that's what this is. So it's just a Hydra. Yes. I'm gonna cycle this cast out. Yeah, I feel like my opponents like just got absolutely no shot to win this game, which, you know, could be, I could eat that, but like, <clears throat> This is awkward. Just not having like things to do with my mana. Okay, so I'm just gonna cast this trickster now so that I can untap my lands. This might, I can save enough energy where they don't care. They'll use energy here. And then I'll definitely just settle one for one here if my opponent wants to. <clears throat> my opponent wants to play this game. And then we're just going to draw two cards a turn if they don't want to. I'd like a counter spell for a Ballista. Because Ballista would be pretty. Ballista is pretty annoying in this spot. Oh, nice. Are you going to go to the game or are you going to, like, lame duck it in bed? And we're just gonna a one for one with this. Sure. So I'll just chump with uh, the trickster. Now I'll chump with this because it turns my retorts on. Gonna like, we're just gonna cast Cellar Wreckage probably for the rest of the game. Okay. That's a really good draw. We get to untap it too, so even if they shoot this trickster down, we still get in there. With uh we always we still get to uh this will untap my opponent's ether hub. We still get in, we can go like settle plus counter spell. This looks like a counter on the ballista. Big, big age. All right, we're gonna counter big age. Or big G, big G, big, big Hulk. And again, I'm just gonna settle this Hydra if I get the chance to, because I got two Gear Hulks. So I just want to, I just want to, um, I just want to use my cards here. I've got to turn these gear hooks on. Now, I guess they still can't kill my Teferi.
All right, seal away is decent. We're definitely running out. We need a little more action. I'm just gonna always yield this. Hit this meandering river. My opponent's ether hub. We get Bane Slayer Angel. That's a Yada Yargon right there. Dude, congratulations to GC Brissett there. GC Brissett was accepted. He's gonna be a you know, Dr. Dr. GC. Dude, way to go. That's pretty awesome, man. I'm just gonna try to eat this. I can still seal away it if I need to, but... Um, I think I'm gonna cast it, like... Because if I, if I just, like, block, then my opponent can pump and kill the Hulk with their Ballista. I want to start turning this turning this sideways. Like we want, I want to start putting a clock on my opponent. And this also means if they have a negate, then we still get to just eat this thing. What do they do there? They activated the Blista. Okay. So we're outpacing this Ballista, which is good. Argos Blood Fast. Okay, that's a card. But it's it's not as good. There we go. It's not as good because we're we have this gear hulk down. Alright. I'm gonna give my opponent a history lesson. Then my opponent can put two counters on on the ballista and then kill my angel. But like whatever, that's their whole turn, and we're gonna play we're gonna play two, put a whole bunch of power on the board. Um, oh man, and we get to like hold up seal away. For an attack. This deck is sweet when it when it does its thing. Like when you when you draw like it's a frustrating part about decks like this is that they're kind of anemic when they don't do their thing, but this deck's been pretty nice. Both play Boston Mystic. Where at Farby? I really appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out today. Hope you're all having a good, a good start to the weekend. Everybody working for the weekend. All right, good way to start the day. I appreciate everybody for being here today. My name is Dylan Hubby. You're watching. My stream here, I'm a part of the Card Hoarder Network, so you should check them out. Card Hoarder is the best bot chain on Moto. They do like great things for the community. Their podcast is great. Um, it's just awesome. Uh, Gamer Craze is another store that sponsors me. Um, they're down below. They foster a college environment, so they have really good buy and sell rates. Um, if you guys like what you see, please check out my YouTube page. The best way to support me, while not you know opening your pocketbooks or anything is to go over to YouTube and hit the subscribe button over there and if you guys want to chat magic on Twitter um, I love I love doing that so just check out my Twitter there I always post before I'm going live so I usually stream every Wednesday and Sunday but sometimes like today my schedule allows different things so so we went 
live on Saturday. But I always post on Twitter before I go. So. Alright, at least we're on the play. This hand, we can definitely go to Punktown USA here. I'm gonna play this Glacial Fortress tapped because, well, I guess it depends on if I'm, if I'm cycling, if I think I have to cycle this cast out. The problem is if I play Glacial Fortress tap, or if I play Planes on one, then I can't play Trickster if I draw it. Which kind of seems like Trickster would be a good draw, it's a two drop. We have to go land Trickster, so I couldn't play it on three. Actually, yeah, I should definitely play my Planes. All right, we're playing against Mono Red. Oh, we're playing against Black Red, okay. I can see Black Red being a tough matchup because they've got um, Disintegration to deal with your Lyra. Like it just it's like a it's like a mono red deck that is better against single creatures, if that makes sense. It's not as good at going wide, but it deals with um, it deals with creatures a lot better. So I'm probably gonna counterspell whatever I get here. Like I'm gonna counter what anything here, it doesn't matter. Hopefully, we can flash Baneslayer in. Flashing in Baneslayer is going to be important. <coughs> if my opponent doesn't do anything, then I'm just going to probably cycle the cast out. Because I think getting to this Lyra is going to be really important. Yeah, we are we are Clunktown USA, Farby. So history banalia is pretty good on this board, but I think if everything goes wrong. Yeah, I just don't think this is a very impactful play at the end of the turn when I can just, this is going to start like, this is kind of like an investment plan. And like what, and this lets me cycle cast out too. So I'm just going to cycle this cast out and I'll just, if I have to, I'll just main phase this Lyra. Disintegration is, a, is pretty bad here for the home team. Like disintegration is eight damage. I'm going to go five. Yeah giving me the unlicensed cycle this hopefully that means there's only one we draw land right, another history is if you're not gonna draw land history is a pretty good draw all right we didn't draw land Then we're just gonna go chump. We're gonna chump eat. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have another unlicensed D. This history is gonna gonna do some work. We should have like a little bit too slow of a star, I think. Slowly, slowly climbing the uh, the ranks today. We're gonna keep our life total high. I think the longer this game goes, the better it is for us. They're gonna be able to bring this Scrappy back, but no, I forgot that that's how that worked. <clears throat> okay, land's good. P is bad, because P is going to make it so Bane Slayer can't block, but at least we're going to get a chump blocker here. Alright. So now we're just going to slam Bane Slayer Angel and hope that their last card doesn't get us. Because they can make it so it can't block. 
then I probably eat eat the pia, take three from the scrap heap, and then just hope. If I can if I can turn this lira sideways one time, I should be in good shape. Because then I can play Teferi, start bouncing things. It's kind of cool that Teferi, like while it's expensive, it comes down and has has a discount. We should just Wrath. But I want to be able to attack Archmage. <sighs> like, I want to use... Like, using this card on offense is just as good as defense, right? Because we're just gaining 5 life. I played Baneslayer Angel a lot in Modern, and like a little, like, I don't know, probably years ago, and I found that like oftentimes the best play pattern was, wow, Walking Bliss has 30 tickets on Moto right now. That's unreal. Um, oftentimes, like, one of the best play patterns was you have to just get, just get your Baneslayer Angel in combat. Doesn't matter if it's on offense or defense, just start putting a clock on it. So I'm assuming they're going to throw this attack with both of these, and then I'm going to block the Scrap Heap Scrounger. Oh, Con. Okay. Make a Construct. So I, I think we're going to bounce that Construct and kill Karn. So like this shoots here, block here, we take two. If we were at a higher life total, I I would agree, but we're just we're just like pretty far behind at the moment. So this is nice here. This is gonna make it so like we're gonna go to two. We're gonna go. To... Okay, we're gonna go to three. Kill Karn. Bounce this construct. And they can't bring back the Scrap Heap Scrounger right now. And I'm totally alright. If this, if this just turns into like a fog, then that's cool because it means like... Like, we just need to buy time. The longer we sit and play with this Baneslayer Angel, the better we are. We're slowly... Slowly climbing, climbing the ranks on Magic Online. Behind Dave C. Dave C's the man. This podcast is great. Okay. And now we can hold up Raf. Hopefully eat something with Raf. Alright, so now they're gonna have double scrappy. Blink of an eye is a pretty good draw. So just let us bounce something. We just all we need to do is buy time. Because as long as this Bane Slayer Angel stays in play, we're gonna be alright. Scavenger Grounds, okay. I don't think we need to slam the other. Like, if we slam the other, we're struggling. Like, we're gonna, we're winning this race pretty handily. I want as many of these, I want access to as many of these as possible. Okay. 
we're just gonna and all we're doing here because like we can deal with card disadvantage and that's all fine I just want as many life points as like the just I want to just as many life points as possible yeah dude regal caracal is garbage this card is where it's at They play. They replay it. We flash in Roth. Killing Phoenix. That's annoying. The last card, Scrap Heap Scrounger. They should not play this Scrap Heap and get this back so that they can use their Scavenger Grounds. I think because like they know that I probably got like a Gear Hulk's in my deck somewhere. You like the idea of Tribal Cats? Some good life decisions one of these weekends. Yeah. I would have... I guess it doesn't really matter. Alright. And, like, when it comes to creature matchups, what matters is that one person has Baneslayer Angel and the other person doesn't. This is, this is why I wanted to add Cast Out to my deck. Just because this card's annoying. Like, because it doesn't attack. It'll just sit there and block for the rest of the game. And that's annoying. Because, like, it just turns my Lyra into, like... Like, I'm not losing the game. But I'm also not winning. Black Blade Reforged. I do not know. I do not know what that means, there are mage. Ballista for two, okay. We can get this Phoenix out of the way, we're in good shape. If we can't get this Phoenix out of the way, we might be in a little bit of trouble. I think Rekindling Phoenix is like in a weird spot in the format. Like it's almost better as a defensive card than an offensive card. Like it does a lot of really good things on defense. Um, we want to get this. Just eat this. They put a counter on this. Then I can flash another one in. My rocks are a little expendable. Like seal away here is really good. money there's no problem like i think i think that uh i think i think jeff hoogland has the most professional stream now do i want to race here so what happens if i race if i just attack with both i go to nine they go to seven then i go, I go to 14 they attack me for four seven then I have the option to flash in my other my Baneslayer Angel if I need it. I think Jeff Hoogan is the most um, I think Jeff Hoogan is the most professional stream on Magic uh, on Twitch for Magic right now. Like the way he handles his sponsors, his donation thing, his timing, like his his stream setup. Like I think I think he's a very good very good streamer. So this is three, six, ten. So probably actually with this line of play that we picked here, I should wasn't paying attention quite as much as I should have been. We probably do have to flash in um, the other main slayer angel to block. Yep. Where your keys are in my pocket.
I think Caleb D is like a very good streamer. I don't think his stream is as organized as professional as Jeff's is though. Caleb's is probably more entertaining. Like I don't find, I don't necessarily find Jeff's stream to be super entertaining, but I think he is super professional in what he does and the way that he runs it. Three, six, 10, 11, put a counter on 12. So I do need to flash in a Bane Slayer to a block. He's got the D in his name. <laughs> Flash this in and eat, eat this. The nice thing is that the Ballista doesn't kill it then. We have left ourselves dead to an unlicensed disintegration though. So like, if we, we probably were different plays that I could have taken here. Maybe it was better to draw cards with my Teferi, but my Teferi would have just died to Scrap Heap plus um, Pia, unless I hit like a two mana piece of interaction. My favorite streamers on Twitch are, I like Holy Shamgar a lot. Um, I like Holy Shamgar and so let's hope they don't have an unlicensed disintegration. Keep the untapped one, block this. This pause feels like it's good for the home team. But we, lo we lose the unlicensed, we put ourselves dead to unlicensed disintegration off the top, which was, we could have played around it. Which is a little frustrating. Um, What do you think of this deck? Debating on building it for VGTQ next weekend. This is only my second game, my second match with it, Den Squared. I do think that it needs some way to manipulate its draws. I think Search for Kanta is probably okay in this deck. Because, like, it's just the, the Flash play pattern. Like, the old blue-white Flash deck when Copter was in standard was either, like, really... Like, when it, when it had Copter, it was just a completely different deck. Pia. Okay, Pia blocks. So now, are we on defense? So attack this blocks here. We go to 17. Then they're coming at me for three, four, six, nine, 12, 13. Though I get a couple good blocks with this three, three here. I think we're gonna play defense. That's why this Rekindling Phoenix is so annoying. The problem is, is if I don't, uh, like, they can just throw artifacts at my, at my Baneslayer Angel. So, like, if they make it so it can't block, they make it so, let's just say that they put a counter on this, put this to two, shoot me for one, double sack, make it so none of these can block, then it's three, six, eight, twelve, and I'm dead. So we're turning the Bane Slayer Angel sideways. Because we gotta, we gotta gain life. And this still might leave us dead, because like he shoots here, then it's... But like we're dead if we don't do anything. We're probably dead if we attack. That's nice at least. And then they don't gain life. So, hold some lands back. It's nice how Pia interacts pretty well against this deck here. Pia is a card that like I love and hate in this format because it's it's a not it's not quite invalidated, but it's worse against the chain gang. So this is three. So they put a counter on this, two, put a counter on this. I block here, three, six, eight. 
Bomat is Bomat probably kills me. Yeah, I definitely after just just only two matches and like this card. This is why I put the cast outs in the deck because this card's really annoying on defense. I don't think this card's a very good offensive card in the format right now. It's a very good defensive card because like seal of way seal away invalidates this card um, pretty bad and settle the wreckage, which are very high played cards right now. Very highly played cards at the moment. Okay, so against this deck, I want my cast out. Um, fumigates. They're going to go big. So maybe I don't want these Fumigates. <clears throat> I think I want another Rain Slayer Angel. I think I want, I think I want to board something like this because I'm pretty sure they're going to go big. Um, I don't think the Wizards are Retorts. I don't think these are that great, but that means it's only with four Wizards. Maybe I want the Tricksters, because like if they go big, then the Tricksters might be able to get in a lot of damage. I could see cutting like these cards here. Maybe I don't want the fourth. And maybe like one of these. I kind of want just all the Dawnbringers. What do we have for Gear Hulk? We've got some Negates. Three Negates might be a little bit too much. Maybe like Blink of an Eye and two Negates. Trickster can kill Phoenix for good. That is real news. So we're going to keep that. I don't think I want too many settles. I kind of just want like these two because the pair with the Gear Hulk will be in good shape here. I think they're going to go big. So I want some negates. We'll be right back. I'm going to grab some coffee. I think Mythic Style is the best type of BSA deck. What do you mean? All right, um. I got a mulligan. Into a worse hand. Ugh. I think I was supposed to keep that one, but we have nothing to do till turn three and we could miss our land drops and we're like, have a bunch of five drops in our hand. Like I it seems like I could have done better with that, but it ends up we mulligan into worse. All right, this is the best hand we've had. This is my bottom. The nice thing is we get to negate. Turn off all the yields, don't skip my turn. The nice thing is we get to negate a blood fast. If they brought that in. It is weird how this deck... Okay, so they, they didn't necessarily go big. Alright, we gotta like... Cross our fingers and hope the top of our library is good. 
I think you, I think they should build this deck in a way where it can abuse Chain Whirler. Because Oh not Chain Whirler, Heart of Kieran. Because Heart of Kieran is like pretty solid against decks like this, because it doesn't tap to seal away. And it's just got like virtual haste. So I What's that? No. Sorry. Okay, so they did not, they did not go big. These Bowmat Couriers are just gonna like win them this game. Because by the time that I get uh, the opportunity to, um, yeah. This game's just super over. We don't have any answers to these Bowmat Couriers. And they're just gonna draw them a million cards. So we're gonna go to the next match here. We kind of know how this, like we, we, we played like the red black, like all these red black artifact decks, Mario or this, they they get some value because they can do the dance. You know, they're like, do I want to go big or do I want to um, stay lean? And and it can catch people, catch people by surprise. This will probably be my last la last league of the day as we're starting as life is like starting to resurrect around here. My wife's getting up, Philly's getting excited. So go do something fun today. Right, I would like to play first. Alright, um, Gosh, we just, there's another hand that's like pretty good if we draw lands. If we don't draw lands, we just like can't win the game. But if we find lands, we're gonna be in a pretty good spot because we're just gonna play that tempo plan and get them. But, if we don't draw lands, we're in a lot of trouble. Land or Elf. I think I'm just gonna tap this Land or Elf in their upkeep. Like, it doesn't really accomplish too much, because I can still play, like, a 2-3 here. The uh, thing that... But, like, I can at least harass them a little bit and buy me some time. And if, I mean, we might get to time walk then. Like, this might be... They might play a tap land and not do anything. Which is looks like what's not going to occur. The fatal push, okay. Land. Okay. Um I guess I'm gonna do the same play. Because if I can get this trickster into play, it's gonna turn on my retort. And it's like all that I have. Like the only other option I can do is bounce a bristling hydra with a trigger on the stack. Which seems kind of mopey because I can't. Uh, I don't have a good play for next turn either. Oh, the big boy. Okay, that was a good draw. So now I'm just gonna pass. Hold up a counter spell. Blink of an eye, something maybe. Definitely in a little bit of trouble. Just missing that land drop is just not not good in a deck like this. We're gonna take three for sure. I really don't want to seal away the Bronzodon either with this Settle the Wreckage in hand. Probably means a ballista's or uh, snakes coming down. This two mana, or they could have their own counter spell, which seems weird for the deck like this to have a counter spell in the main deck. But okay, so 
there's Siphoner. Siphoner was the prize. Should have thought of that. Okay, so I'm actually gonna hold this back to block and hope that my opponent plays, like sees that. Cause like if I attack, then I just telegraph settle the wreckage. I really don't want to telegraph settle yet. The nice thing is they probably have to attack with this. They're gonna attack with this knife siphoner, so we're at least gonna get that out of the way. Hopefully, we get at least two cards with this settle. This deck's been all over Moto though, so they might be playing around it. So we're gonna get two. It's not really a two for one because their siphoner drew them a card. So we're just kind of. We just kind of traded at parity there. At least we traded up on mana. Okay, there it is. So we're just gonna try to, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're just gonna try to slow our opponent down here. Okay, so we drew land. They don't really have anything good to bring back, which is of note. The odd part about this deck is if you played, like it's not a very good search for, it's not a very good like as Kanto the Sunken Ruin deck, I don't think. Braska, gross. This is gross. because Veraska deals with my Dawnbringer. So I probably have to trick here the Scarab God, seal away it, and then try to make an attack at this Veraska with our Tricksters. The problem is they're, they're just gonna be able to get their care of God back because of this Braska. Another reason not to take the Trickster out against Rekindling Phoenix decks is that you can just like tap the Phoenix with it, which is kind of cool. They might just like not even play the Scare of God. Yeah, see, they're, not, they're just gonna like kill me with this thing. Destroy target crap creature. <coughs> it does, it's, it's, an, it's annoying, because Seal Away is really good. But I think. So we have to kind of hit Bronted on here because they're going to get their card back. But then they can just kill this with a trigger on this deck. This deck is like a super... This deck feels like a super anti blue white deck. Oh, I guess they can't because like this isn't in here yet. So I can play Baneslayer Angel and not attack or just attack with one to prevent like the, what does this do? This bounces, we we'll use this blink of an eye and it bounces this. The problem is they just recast it, which is so annoying. I can let them put me to one and then I can settle them. All right, we're gonna try to settle sell this settle here. If I go to one life, like what am I doing? The Scarab God just gets me with one activation. If I play Lyra, he just beats it. I guess I've got to just play... Yeah, there's like no good way out of this.
I guess I just attack my opponent and then I Gear Hulk bounce this. The right card type, yeah. Seal Away is like, Seal Away is similar to a card like Goblin Chain Whirler, where like, you can, um, like Seal Away can either be nuts or Chain Whirler can be nuts or the format can like adapt to it pretty easily. Hey Philly, don't do that. Cause like the format can adapt to Chain Whirler by not playing X ones, you know? And then like Chain Whirler is still pretty good. Like it'll do some things for you, especially if it's Soul Scar Mage in play. Um, I lost my train of thought. Cause like, cause like this, uh, this chain, like, Seal Away, like a card that adapts, that obviously is very good, it's very good and bad against Seal Away, is Rekindling Phoenix. If you play defense, Rekindling Phoenix is very good. It's just like a cast down, probably. No, it's Fatal Push, okay. This card is very good against Seal Away, if you can generate your energy on your own, because it'll just sit there. The Scare of God is very good against Seal Away, because the Scare of God just sits there. Contempt. So they have Scarab God and Vraska in hand. Let's play this. <clears throat> the format can also adapt to this card. Like, this card is very good, but, like, I think I think a card that is... I think a deck that's very good right now is some sort of black-based aggro deck that plays the Chupacabra. Because the Chupacabra is good against, like, Benel, Benel Marshall, I think it's called. It's very good against that card. What do we got? We need... It's very good against Marshall. It's very good against um, the red decks. And it's very good to scare of God back, and it's good against Lyra. So I think I think there's definitely some sort of um, I think there's definitely some sort of really good uh, how do I say this? There's a very good there's a very good black base aggro deck that revolves around the Chupacabra. I don't think I want this card here because they're playing Brontodons in their main deck. That's another argument for not having cast out, but cast out at least. Now we're gonna cut cast out too. We'll bring in another settle. This is where I want like a glimmer. I mean, I don't want all these. Bring in some negates. Cause they're probably gonna have like Planeswalkers and Argo blood fast after sideboard. Yeah, we'll try this. 23 viewers, I hope everyone's having a good start to the morning. I'll play some blue-white flash this morning. Getting a feel out for this deck. I already can see some some like some weaknesses in this deck. I think this deck needs glimmer of genius. Probably the sideboard. Um, and it needs, I think it needs Search for Escanta, but like if you're gonna play Search for Escanta in its main deck, you might wanna like work a little bit on like other cards to play to make it so you can actually find cards. Mold this, this hand's okay. You know, we need lands in general. So, the history doesn't really trade well with the Brontodon, but at least it, I think we, we do need lands. That's not the right land, but like lands are important. The history at least leaves a 2-2 two -two behind. You should actually put a stop here. You should always, when you play this deck, you should put a stop in your draw step because if you d get Roth in play, then and you draw history banalia, you can play history in your draw step and get a second trigger on your main phase. Okay, 
Okay, so we need a white land or a counterspell here. The trickster's not bad. It is at least something to do with our mana. All right, we're just gonna flash this trickster and just get on the battlefield. We really want to draw a white land, so we can play history. History might bait a counterspell out of our opponent, and then this Teferi will resolve. All right, so now we're just gonna play the Meandering River. This leaves us a little weak to like a Bristling Hydra, so we might not be able to jam our Teferi on turn two because of Hydra, or turn five because of Hydra, so we might play History into it. But they didn't seem like they had a huge energy theme. This is fine. I assume that this um, Teferi's gonna get downfalled. They ditched both of them. They're probably, maybe they're short on lands. Yeah, that's what it is. Not downfalled, contempted. Oh, yep, there's the draw step. Card. Okay, Trickster's all right. Like end step Trickster something probably. Or I could flash the Trickster in, tap something down, try to double block to get this Jade Light Ranger off the board. <coughs> okay. Combat, we'll tap this down. And we'll play history on our turn. No spells from our opponent. That's a good draw. We like to hit a land drop. Sweet. So now we can play history. And then have negate up now, or we can um, I think I'm gonna negate this. Get this down, threatens to trade with this, leaves us a tad open to like they can contempt our Teferi. But we've already like our Teferi's done some work already. I'm gonna threaten a double block. So I'm happy with the way we sideboarded here. Because like we do have answers to their cards that matter. But this is this looks like a contempt. Yeah. Which is okay. Alright. It's kind of an awkward draw. But I think we're just going to try to... Well... This Fumigate's awkward. Because like I kind of just want to play History and just start like jamming. But I can't contend something. Because what can my opponent play next turn that sucks? Like... Vraska? That's not even that bad. I think we're just gonna I think we're just getting aggressive. Because next time we get to attack for like 12. <clears throat> I guess this Fima Gate's like the ultimate oh shit plan. Like if my opponent scarab got tries to like scarab god me out of the game. We also can just like tempo our opponent out here. You know, like I can bounce this Jade Light Ranger and attack for 14, and then next turn attack for like 16. 
and just will get get aggressive. Beats by beats by knights. Yanti. That's a card that's kind of awkward to bounce. Both these cards are kind of awkward to bounce, but I'm kind of into like doing some doing some damage here. I guess now that we drew Raph, Raph, we don't need to do that. We can flash Raph in at the end of the turn. Like we'll trade for two of these. Flash in Raph. Like just chew through my opponent's resources. Which history's good at. I wonder if Fumigate's not good against their deck. Because like they appear to be playing a much more, I guess, low to the ground. Like, not low to the ground deck, a bigger deck. Like, I don't think, I bet they don't have Snake in, in their deck. If they cast, like, Baneslayer Angel, then I can contempt it, and then I get the Baneslayer Angel. Which I'm excited about. Like that's what they're doing. And then we get him for a bunch of damage here. I guess I should have flashed. No, that was stupid. This was all stupid. This was dumb. I should have flashed in Wrath and then done that on my turn. Now if we draw history here, I'm gonna be we just miss out on some damage. Yeah, that was stupid. We don't miss out on damage from history, but it was that was just dumb. That was just poor sequencing from the home team. I think I'm gonna hold this land to cycle. Yeah, that was just dumb. But at least I can cycle, I can play the Wrath and cycle, so if, like, I could use my mana for the whole turn. My opponent will be at three life here. The old Brontodon, the big Bronte. Should have cycled a farmland. Gonna cycle the farm lane with this on the stack. Alright. So we get the main slayer angel. We'll flash in the angel next turn. And that'll probably I would assume that the the end of turn angel is gonna be pretty pretty decent. Oh, dude, counting's hard there, Dream So So Sedota. So now we can actually play history and threaten to go wider. So my opponent goes block, block. Probably just getting like the threat in the air is better. But if we play history now, then we get two, and then next turn we're cracking in for like a million points of damage. And. It's just, it's actually just better against, because like this is lethal, and then we're going to have four creatures. Yeah, we're just going to play this. And this is the draw step trick that I was talking about. So we get a knight, now we get another knight, and now we attack for three and then pass. What you say, man? What? Do I
Yeah, but if we do it in our draw in our draw step, then we get it next turn, and they have to crack. Then they have to sack a Brontodon in order to get the to make it so these knights don't become four threes. And basically, if you just if you have Wrath in play and you you know pay attention to your draw step, then you get to uh, you just get to cut a turn off of History of Vanalia. Which, like, might be worse than Flashing in Lyra, but makes it so that I've got one, two, three, four, five of a bunch of lethal creatures. Even if they blow it up and they have to block, if any two of my creatures get through, we win. I think I want one more settle on the draw. And... Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying there, Dream Soda. Maybe I cut, like, one more Counterspell. Or maybe, like, Trickster. Trickster seems a little worse in the draw when I can't, like, go tap a Llanowar Elf. Yeah, let's do that. So three Settles might not be great. Because they seem like they're playing around it. What do they have for blue cards? They've got Negate. Is Jace's Defeat. So Jace's Defeat counters all their counter spells. It doesn't hit Planeswalkers, but it also hits the Scarab God. I'll bring in one Jace's Defeat, I think. Just as it hits the Scarab God. I kind of want to keep the blank just so I don't get run over on the draw. But also, like, by deciding after Dream Soda, we don't get the four. We don't. We also miss out on the Anthem. Yeah, this hand's pretty good. We'll keep this. We're going to curve out here. We'll see what this deck can do when it curves. Play Irrigated Farmland on one. Then probably play Rif If New Rivulet on two so that we can Trickster something. That's nice that there's no Land or Elf. I think we're setting up here for, like... A set of draws that is going to dis, dis, uh, disguise or settle the records pretty well. Wow, this is great. So I think now we just upkeep the Llanowar Elf. Because we're not doing anything else. Oh, we have the draw steps. Didn't need a second one of those. Take of damage. We're just we're just like harassing them. We're not really doing any, like there's nothing super effective about this play. I think it's just more annoying than anything else. It means they need an untapped land to play like a three drop, and they can't play a four drop. Okay. I think I want to play history. I don't think I want to hold for this. Because this isn't really doing anything unless we play completely off curve and we're sacrificing a tap land for it. And plus, like, if we don't have settle on four, they might not play around it as much. So I think I'm just going to attack with the trickster and then play history. They might negate it, but if they negate my history, then the settles are open. If we had a proactive card on four, I would think about setting the planes or playing the farmland and taking this turn off, but I think that we're really kind of on the front foot here, so I think that playing this card's good. Okay. The gate happened. I'm gonna grab some more coffee, I'll be right back. What are your thoughts on field ruin and scavenger grounds instead of the review lights? I wouldn't play a not colored source. I'll make 
make uh, some more coffee after this game match. Yeah, I think I think with um, um, the draw step stop gets me every time. I think that with with history on three and then Wizard's Retort and Trickster, I think you need all the colored sources you can you can deal with or you can manage. How do I sell this settle? I guess I don't even really need to sell the settle because I get I get a good play either ways. So I think I'm okay just taking four. We don't need to chump now. If I chump, it kind of sells my settle a little more. Okay, the branch walker. This is where like land fumigate would be very good. Fatal push. They're probably gonna dump that. But again, like I don't really know too much about this deck. This is literally my third match with it. So I would look at like Dave C's stream or Autumn. That's that's unfortunate. Yeah, I think that this deck, like o having only played a couple matches, I think this deck needs search for his count out really bad. I think it would I think it's actually that bad. Like, we've had many times where this hasn't been great. We're just gonna one for one. No, actually we're not going to. We're gonna get our card in play. This makes it so that if my opponent has something impactful, at least we're on the board. And we can hold the gate up. Pretty soft to a scarab god though. I think everybody gets way too greedy with their mana bases. Like I think I think all the mono red decks that play Scavenger Grounds are like super wrong. Okay, so this is gonna get killed, looks like, okay. Yeah, that's tough. So I could blink of an eye looking for a land, but that seems a little not great. We have the Roth. We showed them Wrath, so they might not respect Settle as much. We just need to hit lands. We can hit lands. I think we're going to win this game. Because our hand's pretty stacked. And they, they appear to be flooding out. off the board hopefully and even if they counter this we have we have backup okay again we're, we're the scarab god's real bad news at any point here like at any point scarab god we probably have to like blink of an eye it then hope they don't have yeah so how much mana do they have One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have to basically like play this thing and kick it, I think. To hopefully to draw cards to somehow find an answer to the Scarab God. And we don't have a lot of answers to Scarab God because we boarded out um, so many of our enchantments. The good thing is there's not really the scare god's not really doing a lot. So that was more kind of a tempo play than anything else. Like on this board right now, the scare god's just a big 5-5 five, five beater, but one fatal push or something like that completely changes the changes the game. I'm gonna just trade. Well actually I'm not gonna trade because then it turns scare of god into a legit card. Because right now scare of god's just kind of medium. So there's the land. Something like Fumigate's even bad here, which makes me think that Fumigate just shouldn't be in this deck. Shouldn't be in my deck against Scarab God after sideboard. So 
So I'm just gonna start settling because I have this gear hulk to settle more. And I just need to like, I can't put a creature in the graveyard because we have this scarab god currently under control, but that could go like six ways to Sunday pretty easy. An untapped land there would have been really good because we could head in the gate. I'm just gonna settle this. I need to just somehow buy to my opponent that it's okay to attack with that Scarab God next turn. And I can't, I can't block this, and we're going down to a pretty low life total. If one of my opponent's last cards is negate, this probably still doesn't get it out of their hand. Now we pass. I might play Raf because we can double history in our draw step, which kind of insulates our board a lot and lets us handle this Scarab God because there's nothing in the graveyard. Pretty interesting game. The nice thing about playing the histories at instant speed is that like I guess it doesn't really matter with Bronthodon because they'll just play Bronthodon um I think we take our shot no nah, actually I don't really want to go to three so we're gonna take our we're gonna take our shot try to gear Hulk our opponent If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna take. Oh, looks like this might work. You have another negate, sir. Okay, no negate, no scare of God. No second scare of God. We can like sort of deal with a Veraska. That's probably fake news, but. Because, like, the menace... I mean, we're, we're going to make a bunch of... They have another god. Okay. Brontodon's really bad. Yeah, because now they hit this and they can start to bring this stuff back. Yeah, so now... Lyra. So we're going to pass... I'm gonna flash in the Wrath, see if my opponent like tries to gear hulk it. And then if they gear hulk it, I'll negate the contempt and then probably go like double history of Benalia in my in my uh, in my draw step to just kind of try to stabilize this board. Scare of God, man. And this is like, this is kind of, this is this is just great deck building for my opponent, I think, because they recognize that the enchantments are good ways to deal with this deck, and that Brontodon just kind of like deals with all the really great answers out of the blue-white deck. Like the deck, the metagame on Magic Online has moved so fast, they've already adapted to this deck. I can't really go to two, I think. So I think I've got to block this. God back this gear hulk. If they God back my hulk, I'll negate the contempt. 
And then I just need to get on the board somehow. So I think... One, two, three. Yeah, I just gotta get on the battlefield. If they wanna trade their Brontodon for one of these, I think I'm all right with it. Now they're gonna flash my Gear Hulk back and negate this. Two blockers. Yeah, I think we've just been like ground out here. Play another one. Cause like now they flash Gear Hulk back. Negate it. We get one of these here. So we get two two twos. Two two blocks, two two blocks. We take four, and then the scarab god trigger deals us three because they bring back a trickster yeah my opponent just gg'd me getting bm'd in the chat what a, what, a, what a meanie what a meanie they bring back trickster tap one of our things card is still good. Scare of God is still very good. Very good magic card. I probably just had me covered a bunch of different ways. But what are you going to do? That's an interesting game to rewatch, I think, because, like, there's a bunch of... There's a lot of decisions. I'm actually going to make some coffee in between rounds here. You, bud. Okay, so let's get back into it. This will probably be my last standard stream for a little while. I gotta figure out what's going on. I haven't gotten anybody to sub for me for the tournament next weekend, so I have to, I have got to figure out the modern deck that I'm playing. So. I don't get any substitutes. This is probably probably something along the lines of this is what I'm gonna play. Like this main deck seems pretty tight. I might want a couple more uh, Ironworks cards, but I'm fairly sure something like this is what I'm gonna play. Some kind of Grixis Shadow, very low to the ground version of the deck. <clears throat> Maybe a couple more Rejections out of the sideboard. I'm not sold on these this card right now. This could easily be like a sweeper. But I'm going to play something like this. In the... If I play in the modern event. Either that, 
or <clears throat> something something with this version of the deck, but then trying some damping spheres. Because Stubborn Denial is not super great in the modern format right now. There's just like a lot of like the, the best two decks are humans and hollow one. <clears throat> and there's just a lot. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of creature decks. So stubborn denials probably the worst it's been since this Death Shadow deck came to came to prevalence. This is the sixth deck I've played so far in this format. All right, we'll keep this. We got like a we have a little bit of interaction, a counter spell, and we got a big a big lady. I love my big ladies. Here she is. Oh, draw step. I'm gonna actually turn this draw step off. Until I have a, until I have one of those in play. I'm not gonna blink of an eye anything. This is gonna be interesting. We're both gonna play Drago for a while. <sighs> There's a chance I should have seal away that, but I'd like to counter a history of Benalia or something like that. So I'm just gonna take a shot from this. <clears throat> the trickster is a good good card in this mirror, I would assume. Just because of the play patterns that it lets you do. I think uh, this card's probably pretty great in the mirror as well. <clears throat> I'm gonna seal away this at the end of the turn. And I'm probably going to hold now because I don't want to tap out and if my opponent casts their own Roth, I'm thinking I'm gonna blink of an eye it. Just bounce it and draw a card. could cast out it, but I think I'd like to just cycle through my deck more. My opponent plays Baneslayer Angel, will cast out it. History's kind of punishing. If I draw a land, I might get Roth in the play. Yeah, because I'm assuming that in this matchup, working at instant speed is going to be pretty big. And this gets Wrath in play with a counter spell behind it. Which is just going to make my deck function at a much more efficient rate. I can block one of these if I need to. That's kind of unfortunate. I would like to land there. Is this when I get my angel to play? The problem is they still have the counter spell up. That was probably a mistake attacking with that. Getting mana on my turn, which isn't super great. Yeah, now I'm like a little punished because I could just play Bane Slayer Angel. 
I should have just played Bait Slayer Angel because not a lot of these decks are playing cast out. That was a mistake on my part. I should have just like, yeah, this was all dumb. So I'm gonna take eight from this history, which I don't really wanna do, but casting it out feels kind of bad as well. Yeah, I, I definitely just kind of like screwed myself here because like I, I like next leveled myself and thought that these decks were playing cast out when they aren't. And then I should have just like let him take it and cast my Bane Slayer Angel. Yeah, this was just like a mistake on my, I just did not play this very well. Yeah, this was, this was not good. Not good for the home team. So we're gonna take eight. I'm gonna try to cast something out, I think. I'm gonna take the eight. And then I'm gonna like try to initiate probably a fight over this um, seal away at the end of their turn and then untap and cast the angel. Then if we draw a land, we have seal away up too, which is nice. <laughs> Teferi would be a decent draw if they fight over this. Their wrath into play. They can ballista, so I probably just attack with my wrath. No, no, we're not going to. I'll attack with it next turn because we have another one. But now we're going to have a little bit of a Bane Slayer Angel off here. love a counter spell because they don't have a counter spell up wow that was such a sick draw now if my opponent flashes theirs in I'm just going to cast it out settle oh I did not think about that that's not good I was so I thought they had their own their own angel because they hadn't held four mana up. But so now I'm gonna try to trade off, probably trade my rat, trade rafts, and then flash in, or I might go like trade here, seal away there. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Eat this, seal away theirs. That's like the first person to draw probably like a Gear Hulk. Because we both have Gear Hulk counterspell in our deck, in our graveyard. Hawking Ballista. That's gonna be a problem. I was thinking just sit on this ballista, but like, I don't have an answer to the angel if I don't. I think I've just got to deal with this ballista. Because the ballista just kind of dictates how the game's played. And we have a seal away for, like, I'm going to get the two for here. Like, they're going to probably pump and then kill this Wrath. Then we'll flash in another Wrath. Like we still have an answer to, um, we still have an answer to their board here. Their, um, gosh, I can't think. We still have an answer to uh, the Bane Slayer Angel that attacks. If this is a counter spell. I'm probably dead. The nice thing is if I draw a Gear Hulk, I get to Gear Hulk probably bounce my cast out back to my hand. 
If I don't have any tap creatures, I'm probably just gonna bounce the cast out with a seal away under it so that like that doesn't get bounced in the future. I, I cut the walking blisters out of this deck because I thought they were kind of anemic, but you know, that's, a, that's a good draw. Very intense game. Very intense game. Okay, so here comes an angel. Okay. You get a Baneslayer angel, and you get a Baneslayer angel. I'm going to seal away the angel. Because if I seal away it, they might think like that they're good to go on um, whatever it is, on attacking with more creatures. If they attack with more creatures and I go seal away, they counter, then Settle's gonna like probably end the game here. All right, man, you got another one? Okay, so block. We got a one. Yep, they got it. So I think I tossed that in the early game. I think that was I think that was my fault. Okay, so I want this. I want the Jace's defeats. I think cast out's great. Though, they might bring in, like, Forsake the Worldly here. I think I'm going to bring in my Forsake the Worldlies also. Cards I don't want. The Trickster seems low impact. It does turn on Wizard's Retort, but I think that's kind of it. Like, I can deal with a three-mana counterspell. Um... The sealways seem like kind of a little overzealous. Maybe I want these. Maybe I just want all the counter spells. I don't think I want all the Lyras. Raph seems great. Maybe I don't want all these negates. The problem is negate hits history, which is like so big at dealing like paying over plates of fairy on a on an even board. I just got one card. It's probably in the game. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure at a sideboard here in this this old this here mirror match. I'm gonna keep this. We have a cycle if we need to. And we have a history. Like history's pretty good on the play, I think. I think it's gonna let, you know, just get on the battlefield. I'm gonna cycle this for sake the Wardley. So my opponent doesn't have history mana for next turn. Land. Come on. Come on, land. You can also board a card like Forsake the Worldly in, and it's not really, it's kind of like low. That's a great draw. It's, it's pretty low risk because it cycles. And if like, and if we think like the next level of this deck is like Search for Escanta, so they, they kept the tricksters in, which is definitely defensible. Because, like, it does turn on Wizard's, uh, Wizard's Retort. There's no like, trade off here. Is that what's going on? <coughs> We're definitely cycling our. Um, probably should have waited because the, they're they Yeah, that was stupid. They attack better as 4 threes. Yeah, that was dumb. 
That was dumb. Should have just waited. Missile land drop. They cycle the land. Yeah, I definitely. That was dumb. Should have waited. I mean, I'm going to get a bunch of value out of this history, anyways. Because like, it looks like I'm probably going to get at least one more card out of it. Which is still good, but. Land. All I want is lands. Okay, so get it in. Up to counter a Wrath, and then don't get wrecked by a Lyra. <coughs> and I've got a, I think I've got to cycle this. I just need lands. Yeah, the negate's tough. Then incoming Lyra, then we're really on the back foot. Oh wow. Alright, so I'm just gonna attack for the same reason that um Okay, yeah. And I think my opponent should not do that. They should just take it. Because um because their knights are like worth more as like bigger creatures. Yep, that's not good. It's not good at all. All right, there's a land. It's a bit late to the party, but it is a land. So we have like a negate up in case my opponent's got like a planeswalker here. Looks like we just missed land drops and it, it's gonna cost us. Now we need our own land. I think we need to land Lyra, geez. Well, at least we get to try to settle them. But they, if they like confidently attack here, we know this isn't resolving. Yeah. I think this is just like a crapshoot. They let it resolve. That's such a, like, with five cards in their hand, that's such a, like, a power, a power move here. So if we draw land, at least we can get Teferi in play. Jesus. We had a chance there if we drew a land because we could have got to ferry and bounce this and then drawn some cards i think there's a potential that i sideboarded just completely wrong for this deck so what's we're gonna assume this we're gonna assume this resolves the card that's better for us the longer it stays in play is Teferi. Yep. We're just going to jam another Teferi next turn, I think. Unless my opponent adds to the board. Because Teferi is just the best card. Longer Teferi. If we can establish Teferi, it's, it's like theoretically how we're going to win the game. This allows me to go Gear Hulk settle on their turn, but again, it doesn't really matter. I think just the only way I win this game is if I can stick it to Fairy. Yeah, this this is a commit. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the deck here. So. I think this deck in its in its state right now is not very good. I think part of that's a, I just I don't know how to play it well, and I might have made some changes to the deck that made it worse. Like I cut the walking blisters to add in cast outs for like the rekindling phoenixes and those cards that seem to dominate um, combat. Like this card has this deck struggles to get rid of. I definitely think that. I can put the cast outs in the sideboard. 
play like one less of these. Um, I don't even think we necessarily need the authority of the councils because of Lyra against the red deck. So maybe I could move these cast outs to the sideboard here. Cut these. Cut one of this for maybe something. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but if I cut, want to cut these three cards, I could at least add like or we bring we put like a glimmer in the sideboard. I think. I cut these, play Glimmer, Glimmer, and then in the main deck have um, have more uh, have some search for his contest. Just something to interact with our draw a little bit. I also wouldn't mind like a Glimmer in the main deck to make this Torrential Gear Hulk better because this Torrential Gear Hulk these Hulks aren't very good. I don't think because like we've only got. Eight spells, nine spells in the main deck. So I think you could easily cut something like maybe one Raph. Like Raph seems kind of underwhelming. Like Raph is good when you can get it to stick, but if you don't have Raph plus X, then Raph's just not a very good card in my opinion. So maybe you could cut a Raph and then add, like you could cut a Raph and then add in two search for his contas in a glimmer because glimmer also plays well with raf and you're going to find your rafts more and it's a legend so it's like it's not super and it doesn't impact the board like lyra does and your searches are going to help find your rafts so but i really appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out today i'm going to watch the star city games when it comes on so i don't want to start another week here so I'm going to send it over to Dave C. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning.